There are around 100 billion nerve cells called neurons in our brain. Messages are passed between these neurons at high speeds by electrical impulses called action potentials. A single neuron alone only produces a tiny amount of electricity. But if you sum the electricity produced by all 100 billion neurons, the human brain can generate between 10 and 23 watts of energy. Enough energy to power a light bulb. Up to three quarters of the brain is made up of water, so we need to drink enough for it to function properly. Severe dehydration could lead to problems with attention, concentration and memory, and could even cause the brain to shrink. 15% of the brain is made up of fat, which helps insulate the cells so they can transmit messages faster. And the remaining 10% of our brain is a mixture of proteins, carbohydrates, soluble organic molecules and inorganic salts. In the first few years of a child's life, the brain grows rapidly in size and weight. By the time we are two years old, our brain has reached 80% of its adult size but the brain continues to develop well into adulthood. Most neuroscientists now agree that we are well into our 20s and maybe even into our early 30s before our brain is fully developed. The prefrontal cortex, which helps us to make decisions and to control our emotions, is one of the last things to finish developing. But it doesn't end there. Even as adults, when our brain is fully developed, it can still make changes to adapt to new experiences. This process is called neuroplasticity. Keeping such an advanced organ running is demanding work and the brain uses a huge amount of energy relative to its size. Our brain only accounts for about 2% of our total weight, but uses 20% of our total energy supply, even when we are resting. For example, if my body needed 1300 calories a day just to survive, my brain would need roughly 260 of those calories. That's around 10 calories per hour. In order to be able to experience pain, a body part needs sensory nerve cells called nociceptors. Brain tissue doesn't have any nociceptors, so it's not possible for the brain itself to experience pain. This can be useful in certain types of surgery, such as this, awake craniotomy, and the patient needs to be kept awake to make sure that certain areas of the brain, such as those that control movement or speech, are avoided. But what about headaches? Well, the tissues around the brain, such as the scalp and the muscles in the head, do have nociceptors. So it's possible for us to experience pain in our heads, it's just not our brains that are feeling it.